The area known as the Headless Valley is a region of the Nahani National Park Reserve in the Northwest Territories, Canada. Known for its spectacular scenery that includes canyons, waterfalls, hot springs and caves, the valley has another more sinister claim to fame. Legends and stories surround this valley. Legends about lost gold, mysterious native tribes and, of course, headless corpses. Officially, Nahani National Park was established in 1976 and inscribed on the World Heritage List in 1978. In fact, the valley was one of the first four natural heritage locations to be given this status. Located in the Northwest Territories of Canada and labeled as one of the last truly unexplored places in the world, the Nahani National Park Reserve is known for having a stunning natural beauty as well as a rich cultural history. Located approximately 500 kilometers west of Yellowknife, the park is an undisturbed natural area consisting of deep river canyons cutting through mountain ranges with huge waterfalls and complex cave systems. But the centerpiece of the park is the South Nahani River. The river itself also has deep canyons, huge waterfalls and spectacular karst terrain which means areas of land that are made up of limestone. It also has cave systems and hot springs. The name Nahani comes from the indigenous people living in the area, the Dene. Despite being established in the 1970s, the Dene have used these lands for thousands of years, with the first human occupation of the area estimated to have occurred some 9,000 to 10,000 years ago. The first Europeans in the area were fur traders who arrived in the 1700s. More explorers would soon come into the region with Alexander Mackenzie's exploration of the Mackenzie River and of course the building of trading posts at Fort Simpson and Fort Laird. During the 19th century, most Dene families would settle into more permanent communities which were often very close to these trading posts. As I mentioned, this area is known as one of the last truly unexplored places in the world. It is very remote and the best routes into the Nahani are via air, water or a long overland journey from an abandoned village known as Tungsten. This remoteness has led Nahani Valley to remain largely untouched over the centuries, if you don't count the indigenous people who call the area home. The wilderness in the area is at best challenging and at worst fatal. Even if you manage to navigate the landscape, you still have the animals to contend with. The area is home to many diverse animal species, such as grizzly bears and timber wolves. But there are legends of another danger that may be lurking in the valley. The Dene speak of another tribe that lived deep in the valley, called Nenaha who were a warlike tribe living in the high mountains, who would descend into the lowlands to raid and kill. Stories of the Naha and possible other dangers would be mostly ignored when the Klondike gold rush would hit the country. This led many prospectors to head out into the remote Canadian wilderness with dreams of finding gold. Most would return empty-handed, that is, if they returned at all. While the entirety of Nahani Valley is surrounded by mystery, the area that is the most famous is known as the Valley of the Headless Men. This area is known as the 200 Mile Gorge and it's this area that's become infamous due to the gruesome deaths and disappearances that's happened there. Possibly the most well-known tale of the Headless Valley is about the McLeod brothers. Willie and Frank McLeod traveled from Edmonton, Alberta to the Nahani Range in 1904. 
the reports of gold in the area proved far too tempting. The brothers only had primitive gear with them when they reached an area called Gold Creek. But unlike many of the people who came to the valley in search of gold, the McLeod brothers were actually successful, and they returned to their home with gold in hand. Still, the allure of this gold was very tempting, and they wanted more. So they began planning for a second expedition into the Nahani range. This time they would bring another person with them, a Scottish engineer with the surname Weir. The three men would head out for this second expedition in 1905. They never returned. Nothing was heard from the brothers, and no one knew what could have possibly happened to them. In fact, it would be their brother, Charlie McLeod, who uncovered what had happened to them. In 1908, he would lead a search in the park, and he would find two skeletons in their camp on the river's edge in a vast valley. The scene was disturbing enough with just finding two skeletons, but one skeleton had his arm outstretched towards his gun, as if he was trying to defend himself in his last moments. Blankets were thrown across the other man as if he had suddenly leapt from his bed. The most disturbing part of this scene was that both skeletons were missing their heads. And this discovery of the McLeod brothers would give this valley its new name, Dead Man's Valley. The third man, though, the Scottish engineer, has never been found. From that point on, more and more people would go missing in the valley. Another prospector, a man named Martin Jorgensen, would also set off into the valley on a quest for gold. He sent letters back home claiming that he had been successful that he had indeed found gold in the valley. Suddenly the letters would stop, and no one would hear from him again. But then, in 1917, the cabin where Jorgensen lived was found burned to the ground, with the remains of his body among the ashes. Like the McLeod brothers previously, Jorgensen's body was missing its head. This discovery, along with the stories of what happened to the McLeod brothers, would give rise to rumors that there were headhunters in the Nahani Valley. But interestingly enough, it also gave rise to rumors that the Nahani hides a valley of gold alongside dangers, similar to legends of El Dorado. These rumors of a mysterious valley within the Nahani, coupled with the fact that the McLeod brothers had reportedly been very successful in finding gold, led many to search for a mine nicknamed the Lost McLeod Mine. Many have journeyed into the valley to search for this mine. Most never make it back. At least 20 people have died searching for this mine. The rumors of something attacking and ending the lives of the people venturing into the valley would only increase when more bodies were discovered. In 1927, the body of a man named the Yukon Fisher was found on the banks of Bennett Creek, which is very close to the place where the bodies of the McLeod brothers had been found years prior. The man known as the Yukon Fisher had been dubbed an outlaw and had been sought by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police for several years before his body was found. In 1931, the body of a man named Phil Powers would be discovered in the ashes of what was once his cabin, very similar to Martin Jorgensen. Then in 1936, prospectors Joe Mulholland and Bill Epier would disappear. Many searches for these two men would be conducted for several years, but they were never found. The only thing discovered was their cabin, which had mysteriously burned to the ground. An unnamed miner from Ontario would also venture into the valley in search of gold. His body would later be found in his sleeping bag, without his head. All of these deaths are unsettling on their own, as well as the fact that cabins seem to mysteriously burn to the ground. Finding a body means that we do know what happened to them. Sort of. But there are so many people that we don't know what happened to them. 
I've already mentioned too, there's also another prospector named Angus Hall, who also ventured into the Nahani Valley in 1928. He ventured deeper into the valley ahead of his party, disappeared and has never been seen. Another well-known story from the Nahani Valley involves a woman named Annie Lafert, who went missing in the Nahani in 1926. She was in the valley with her hunting party near Flat River. It's believed that at some point she got lost in the wilderness which led to her disappearing. Many years later, a native man called Big Charlie would claim that he had seen a woman in the valley. He said that he spotted a woman who was climbing a hill completely naked and she seemed to have completely lost her mind. All we know is whether this sighting is of any or not, it's clear that she has become another victim of the inhospitable Nahani Valley. If it's not a sighting of Annie, then there may be some other woman who also went missing in the valley. We may never know. As I've mentioned previously, there are many legends of this valley. It is rich in lore and tales of mythical beings and or places. Here's a few of those. The first one is actually one that is kind of my favorite, if I'm honest. It relates to the hot sulfur springs found in the area. These springs, in combination with the cooler arctic air, creates thick and mysterious mists that often covers the entire valley which creates a very eerie, almost otherworldly ambience. An ambience that has led to tales of there being a tropical valley somewhere hidden within the Nahani Valley. Scientists have been discovering numerous remains of prehistoric animals, such as mammoths and prehistoric bear dogs, and this has led to more legends and tales of this tropical valley. Tales that say that there is this hidden valley that has animals such as the mammoth living within the most remote parts of the Nahani. And many of these legends claim that these ancient predators, such as the bear dog, still roam the valley and may be responsible for many of the deaths and disappearances. Let's continue with the theme of some kind of hidden valley. Due to the fact that many parts of the valley still remain unexplored, there are also tales that the valley holds an entrance to a subterranean world, which is tied into the hollow earth theory. The hollow earth theory was first suggested in the late 17th century. This idea suggested that the earth was hollow and had openings at the north and the south poles. And if you were to move through these entrances, you would find yourself in this beautiful landscape where mysterious peoples resided, unseen by everyone on the surface. This theory has evolved over the years and has also been connected to conspiracy theories of reptilian humanoids that are said to live deep within the earth. From a scientific perspective, the hollow earth theory is largely dismissed, but it still has a strong presence in folklore, conspiracy theories, and of course fictional tales such as the Jules Verne novel Journey to the Center of the Earth. The idea that there is a subterranean land has been part of mythologies all over the world since ancient times. So while the theory was proposed and suggested in the 17th century, the idea that there is some hidden land deeper in the earth is way older than that. Some examples of subterranean worlds include the ideas of where you go when you die. One such example is the Greek underworld. According to the ancient Greeks, the underworld were very much a real place, and there were even places throughout the world itself where you could enter the underworld, which is something that does happen in quite a few Greek myths. Then you have the ideas of entrances to hell 
that are said to exist all over the world, with Huska Castle probably being the most famous. Going back to the Nahani Valley, the idea here is that somewhere hidden deep within this unexplored valley, there is an entrance to a hidden world, either subterranean or hidden by fog that envelops the valley. And perhaps all the people who have gone missing accidentally found their way into these hidden worlds. This is a theory that is sometimes also mentioned if you look into the missing 411 phenomena. There is another legend that speaks of a creature called the Wahila, a large wolf-like creature that is said to inhabit Alaska and the Northwest Territories. The creature has a wide head and long pure white fur and is much larger and much more heavily built than a normal wolf. Supposedly it is strong enough to bring down a bear, but it's said to prefer easier prey, such as juvenile, old or injured animals, or possibly even humans. The name Wahila was given to the creature by cryptozoologist Ivan T. Sanderson. The native legends describe this creature as an evil spirit with supernatural powers that kills people by tearing off their heads. Some people have theorized that this creature, the Wahila, could possibly be an ancient predator, such as the bear dog. There are also tales of a being called the Nukluk, which is a Bigfoot slash Neanderthal-like creature that reportedly resides somewhere in the valley. In June 1964, a boy named Jerry would report seeing a strange creature near Fort Simpson at around 9 p.m. This creature reportedly had black hair on his head, upper body, and legs, with a long brown beard that reached its waist. It wore ankle-high boots, a moose skin loincloth, and carried a stone club in his hand. This report is the most well-known report of this supposed creature. But it is said that this being has been sighted for hundreds of years, from the Northwest Territories to Yukon to the Kenai Peninsula in Alaska, which is where you'll find towns like Portlock. The creature is said to have boot-like footprints and makes whistling calls. Of course, there's also tales of more supernatural beings, such as an evil spirit that is said to haunt the region. Native tales speak of a group of hunters who wandered into the valley in search of game. Only a few would return, and they would bring with them tales of a spirit whose otherworldly shrieks would echo throughout the canyons on cold and windy nights. Those are just a few of the creatures said to inhabit this region. Let's move away from the supernatural a bit, and focus on the tales of the tribe called the Naha, which I mentioned before. According to the Dene, the Naha were a warlike tribe living in the high mountains. They would descend into the lowlands to raid Dene settlements surrounding the rivers. The Naha's presence can be felt in the name of the valley itself. The name Nahani comes from the Dene name for the area, Naha Dehe, which means river of the land of the Naha people. After dealing with these attacks by the Naha for years, a group of Dene braves decided to fight back and they traveled deep into Naha territory for a surprise ambush. They got close to one of the Naha camps and readied their weapons to attack. But when they rushed into the camp, they found nothing. Their enemies were nowhere to be found. 
and it appeared as if they had been gone for a while. With all the tales of the other dangers of the region, the Dene warriors then decided to head back to the lowlands. The Naha would never be seen again, and no trace of them has ever been found. They exist only in oral histories. But unlike the tales of the other creatures that can be found in the valley, the majority of sources that I could find do seem to believe that it is possible that there once was a tribe called the Naha who inhabited the valley. It seems strange for the Dene to name the entire region after the Naha if they never existed. That then leads to the question, what happened to them? Did they leave the valley? Did some kind of disease wipe them out? Or did they retreat deeper into the valley where they remain to this very day? The stories of unexplained phenomena lost souls and the beauty of this untamed landscape continues to captivate explorers and researchers alike. One question I was curious about when I was researching this video is what could remove the head from a body like that? And from researching I found that in the case of birds where the only thing that's missing is the head the predator may be a raccoon, a hawk or an owl. One example given was that raccoons have been known to pull a bird's head through the wires of an enclosure and then eat only the head, leaving a very unsettling image of a body without a head stuck in a fence. Those are birds, smaller animals. I couldn't find anything of a raccoon, hawk or owl doing that to a human. It would take a bigger predator, as a human would be bigger prey. Some predators, such as the grizzly bear, which is one animal that calls the Nahani Valley home, is known to attack the head or the neck of its prey. But a bear wouldn't eat just the head. They would eat much more than that and leave more of a mess. It is still very possible that predators, like wolves, Bears may be the reason for some of the disappearances. It still doesn't really explain the strangeness of the bodies, as they were mostly intact. Some of them were found in a burnt down cabin, and one man was found mostly intact, except for his head, still in his sleeping bag. So animals may be the cause of some of the disappearances, but they may not be the cause of the bodies that had been found. So what could the cause actually be? Well, one other suggestion that I found was that feuding gold prospectors could have been the cause of some of the deaths. The idea of someone being willing to kill in the name of greed is very believable. It has happened before and it will most likely happen again. Greed has been known to make people do the vilest of things. So in the case of the McLeod brothers, how they were found and the fact that they had reportedly found a mine filled with gold, it's not that difficult to believe that someone decided to take this gold mine for themselves. Maybe that someone was the third man who went with them on the second trip. Or maybe it was someone who had followed them to this area and then attacked them. From what I could find when researching, the explanation that most seem to believe or at the very least refuse to dismiss entirely is the one offered by the Dene. That there is a dangerous tribe lurking somewhere in the valley. One that will attack anyone that ventures too deep into their territory. The wilderness always poses a lot of threats, supernatural or otherwise. And because of that, it makes perfect sense that a massive untamed area like the Nahani Valley would be even more dangerous. What makes this area so mysterious is the questions surrounding it. The treacherous landscape and the wild animals pose a danger for anyone venturing into the area. But are they the only dangers? Is it possible that there is some other undocumented creature roaming the area? Or is the threat more human 
such as a mysterious tribe living deep into the wilderness. Regardless of what you believe, it does seem like something is lurking in the valley. Either it's completely natural, such as a harsh wilderness or wild animals, or it's something supernatural, such as a mysterious hidden valley or an ancient predator. Or the threat is very much human, still dangerous, but human. One thing that remains certain though is that the Headless Valley will always, to some degree, hold a place in our collective imagination as a testament to the enduring mysteries of this blue planet we call home. Thank you.